Hallelujah. We're going to move fast. So get your shorthand out. And that way it can help your long hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amazing, isn't it? Truth. Truth. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, Hallelujah. First Timmy 4. Thank you, Jesus. Good worship. Wonderful presence. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 verses. Now the Spirit expressly says that in a latter time some will depart from the faith. That means connection. Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So you got to remember something. This is so vitally important. He's saying, look it. There's going to be people that are going to fall from the faith. They're going to backslide. They're going to proclaim to be Christians. Amen. And what's going to happen to them, because these are so-called believers and know the truth. They're going to fall into a place where their conscience becomes corrupt. Now, I want you to know that you and I are, as we've lived before Christ, B.C., we had a seared conscience. Now, your conscience is a place, it's an it's a area of awareness. And what he's saying here, he's saying in the latter times, the Spirit expressly says that there would be altered state of consciousness, manipulated by frequencies, airways, words, music, videos, causing the level of awareness to become corrupted, dull, blind, and asleep. It's called a seared conscience. One of the things that God is bringing us through right now, you know, he's converting the soul, but there's got to be a conversion. There's got to be a, a conversion of the conscience from a seared conscience that's been corrupted and now the process of removing the corruption out of the conscience. Now, you've got to remember something that, you know, we, we don't really realize all the time in the area to where your conscience, didn't anybody ever say to you, that person's got no conscience, you know? A person that doesn't have a conscience is a psychopath. Reality. We'll talk more about that here in a second. So anyways, one of the things we must look at is the accidents of corruption is going to have to, be, have to come to a place where people will not escape the corruption, amen, if their conscience is not converted and cleaned. It just won't happen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In verse 1. Now remember, these people knew the truth and they believed. <laughs> but they became blind and asleep. They become dull. You know, when you be begin to see everything. Now, I'm going to share with you that my first visitation from the Lord. His presence was radiant. That radiant is frequency. Everything here is frequency. There's a vibration to everything. You and I are electrical. Amen? Music is frequency. Words are frequency. Everything flows. Even when spirits, demons speak, it's a releasing of frequency. There's frequency that brings corruption to you, and there's a frequency that brings life and light to you. Amen? The gospel of Jesus Christ is light in life, frequency to each and every one of us. That 
believes, receives, and it allows not only the conversion of the soul, but the cleansing and conversion of the conscience. So it becomes pure. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, let's speak it. Therefore, since we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel, which is the message of truth, is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we did not preach ourselves with Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Again, God said, my people are destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. Knowledge. The gospel of Jesus Christ creates light and, and, and awakening into your spirit of a human who's willing to follow. This glorious radiance or frequency drives out all corruption and darkness and brings sight to the blind, awareness to the misled. It brings what? Awareness. That's why many people are not aware. You know, people don't get it. Because why? Their conscience is still corrupted. They're not aware of things. They're not sensitive to things. They drift too easy. They float everywhere. They can't pay attention. When it comes time for worship, to lift hands all the way, they can't do it. They can't cooperate because their conscience is corrupted. They don't know when to clap because clapping removes demons, doesn't it? So they're inviting them and don't even know it. They're sticking their hands in their pockets. They're like this. They don't realize that they become the source of habitation now. And they're conscience becomes more and more corrupt. And that's where a hardened heart comes from. That's where rebellion comes from. Think about all the things that can cause a hardened heart or corrupted conscience. A hardened heart is a seared conscience. Amen? Because it can't receive from God. It rejects it all the time. So there's that conversion now, not only of the soul, but of the conscience. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Again, in this, this awareness that God is talking about is the awakening and the refreshing of your state of consciousness. Removing flawed perceptions of lie and fear. Fear is the number one thing that will really mess up a person's conscience. Because it opens the door to so many things. That's why the powers of darkness go after the young children. Because they know that if they can abuse them, torment them, torture them, assault them, they impart in them a fear that sears their conscience. Many of them will grow up as psychopaths with no empathy or no remorse for the things they do. That's how the enemy is operating. Ephesians chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. Why are people getting jab? Because their conscience is still corrupted. There's not awareness, is there? There's not alertness, is there? Ephesians 5, verse 8. For you were once, what? Darkness, but now you are light, and the Lord walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. That's why bad company corrupts good habits. Why? Because <laughs> that frequency from that individual, what we call presence also, a frequency is a presence, amen, begins to corrupt that person and corrupt their conscience. 
And if the enemy can turn your conscience over and corrupt it, where it becomes more and more hardened, your heart, and you become more and more seared, you can't receive from God. The only thing that you are fed on is yourself of the flesh and especially the emotion. Individuals that are emotionally motivated have a corrupted conscience because they're led by emotion, not by voice, not by truth. Verse 12. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because of what? The days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Again, the accidents of corruption results in its more exposure by the frequency of God's light through his words, his presence, and brings life to the dead, sight to the blind, and awakening to the sleeper. And this is where we are now. It's happening. But many people are falling back asleep again. People you love are falling back asleep again because their conscience is becoming corrupted. In 1 Peter chapter 5, You know, where it says circumspectly, that means a tentative, or what we might say, aware. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Hallelujah. Everybody okay? So one of the things we want to be able to do is, what is the state of our consciousness? This is what we must know. If you don't know, ask somebody. You will know by their awareness. First Pete chapter 5, verse 6. Let's speak it. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Be what? Why do you not think about this? He says be sober. Be aware. Be alert. Amen. Be vigilant, which is consistent. A person who is not awake or aware cannot be consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking him who he can devour. How does he devour an individual? He gets him in a state of consciousness that it becomes dull or hard of hearing or dull of alertness or perception. That's how he baits them. It says here, Resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Sober is alert, vigilant is consistent. It is the state of your consciousness or the awareness. Your perception will result of your perception of things and your awareness of things will result in your behavior. Does everybody get it? It will result in your what? Your behavior. Whether you're a reactor or a responder. Whether you are submissive or rebellious. Everybody okay? Oh, happy days. Remember, corrupted voices of conscience. They promote flesh and its ruler. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2. And verse 1. Ephesians 2 verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and what? Sins. What sin? The presence of evil. Does the presence of evil... Carry a frequency. Yes. See, we got to begin to look more beyond the physical all the time. 
In fact, all the time. Yes, we live in the physical, but we're not attached to the physical. We're to be separated from this place and attached to eternity. So that we're seeing things through all the time. We are sensing these things. We are aware of these things. We are detailed of all of these things. Glory. In verse 2. I'll start with verse 1. And you were made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the what? Air or frequencies. Hello? The spirit who now works in the sons of who? Disobedience. Is disobedience rebellion? Is rebellion a curse? Will it cause your conscience to be corrupted? Will you behave different? Will your perception be different? Will your awareness be different? Hello, let's go home. Verse 3. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling desires of the flesh and of the mind or of the thoughts, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were idiots, dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with who? Christ. By grace. What's grace? God's plan of escape. Okay. If he's got a plan of escape, is that according to his word? Ah. What's his word bring? Light, life, and the frequency. Amen. So we can see and so we are aware. That's why the world is not aware. They're not awake. They're going back to sleep again. And they're getting plagued with all of this foolishness and lies and deceptions. And then they're taking medications that promote it. The lies and deceptions. Hallelujah. Verse 6. And raised us up together and made us together in heavenly made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward one another in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourself it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Hallelujah. Again, the prince of power of influence <laughs> has been holding us captive for all these years with lies and deceptions, with a rebellious heart, seared conscience, rejecting the things from above. But Jesus made us alive. Making us alive means he awakened you. Again, a, a, an individual that's dead is asleep. Amen? A person that's alive is awake. He awakened us. Hallelujah. That's why he's known as Jesus is the re of the resurrection. He's the resurrector. Why? Because it brings light, life, and love. Galatians 3. Glory. Galatians 3, verse 1. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has what? Bewitched you. Okay, which witchcraft? Come on, it's the influence of darkness, isn't it? You know, when they, listen, witchcraft means they're praying against you. That means they're releasing a frequency, aren't they? Words of corruption, words of darkness, words of evil. When a person curses something, it dies, doesn't it? Remember, Jesus cursed the tree. It withered. For me and you, it might take 30 days, but praise God. Hallelujah. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Who has messed with your conscience? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect in the flesh? Remember, 
The influence is to promote the flesh again and its ruler. Who's the ruler of the flesh? Satan. Amen. And that's where a person gets a seared conscience. Who has bewitched you? Who has deceived you with corrupt persuasion? With a different frequency that has altered your perception and your awareness or your consciousness. Amen? Your perception and your awareness are associated with your consciousness. James 3. in your behavior. Amen? Whether you're a nuclear reactor or you're a responder. <laughs> Hallelujah. James 3 and verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct or behavior that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy, wait a minute now, is bitter envy a good frequency or bad one? Bad. And self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. Why? Because you see what it does? It causes people to lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. That means that corrupted conscience is moving towards a seared conscience. Unless it turns. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make Peace. Corruptive wisdom is a flawed perception, flawed awareness, flawed behavior. Does everybody get it? And it becomes a seared conscience. Second Timothy 1. That's why we're seeing a great awakening. Many people are becoming awake, but many people are going to sleep and are rejecting the light of the truth. And their conscience is becoming more and more corrupted till it becomes seared. See, when you and I worship the Lord, we are taking those words, but we're singing to Him. We're not singing like this. You're singing to your feet. You're not singing to the wall. You're not singing to, you know. You're singing to him. The reason why people can't do this is because their conscience is not converted yet. Is everybody okay? There's that process of conversion of the conscience. To saying that there's a process of the conversion of the soul. Because there's not an awareness there's a level of awareness. There's a level of perception of things. That's called discernment. They can't discern God's presence. They can't discern what to do in God's presence. But until it is, the more you get in God's presence, the more you worship, the more you are fed by the word, the more light, life, love begins to push out darkness and deception and blindness. Now you become more aware. You're not looking at people's faults. You're checking your own. Hello? You're not being criticized, critis, critical of other people. You're checking your own, man. Why? Because that's the, those are the things. Grumbling and complaining, all of those things bring corruption to your conscience. Some people can never get rid of it. And they can only advance so far, and God can only trust them so much. Hallelujah. All right, verse 1. Second Timothy, let's speak it. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. 
and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men. Is everybody there? I'm in the wrong place, aren't I? Well, I need to say something. Verse chapter 1. He's like, everybody's going, where is he? I don't know. Ask him. He doesn't know where he is either. Let's try this again. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. All right, let's repeat this. <laughs> Replay. I thank God. Is everybody on the same page here now? We're good. Okay. I thank God whom I serve with a what? Pure conscience. So he serves God with a pure conscience, not a corrupted one. As my forefathers did, as without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day and greatly desire to see you being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear, but power and of a love, and of a what? Sound mind, so you see the effect, what fear does. It messes you up your thoughts. Amen? No power, because you're relying on yourself. And the love is not there. It turns to lust. Fear being one of, one of, uh, the, one of the major roots of searing a conscience. Abuse to little children become... Psychopaths, which carry no remorse or empathy, putting themselves in their, in other words, an individual cannot put themselves in their shoes and how they feel. That's called psychopath. That's why abusers of people, even husbands in, that abuse their wives and wives that abuse their husbands, they're not putting themselves in that position and how that person feels. There's no empathy or remorse for those that are being victimized because they're sickos or psychos. Psychopaths, same thing. Why? Because the conscience is seared. Amen? If the conscience is seared, they wouldn't be doing those things, would they? Hallelujah. And they will do anything to get what they want. Self first. They will lie, they will cheat, and they will murder. Sounds like the Democratic Party. Hallelujah. Romans 8. That's why they're psychopaths. They get up on TV and they lie like crazy. They don't give a hoot. That's why they abduct children and murder them and so forth. That's why you got all these news people. They're lying and promoting the same thing. They don't want to tell the truth. They're only interested in money. Thinking that it's going to rescue them. But you know what? Nobody gets away with it. Not with daddy. For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption. Yes. And to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Exiting, we are exiting the age of corruption with a pure conscience. Were they what? Pure conscience. <clears throat> John 10.
John 10, verse 1. Again, there will be many who will not accept the truth when it's all, when it's all exposed. Because our conscience is so seared. <clears throat> They're caught up in their own belief system. Verse 1, most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep do what? Follow him. For they know his voice. Yet they by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the strangers. Why? Because they have come in an area of an awareness. Their conscience is pure. They know what is unclean. They will not come near what's unclean. Does everybody get that? Unclean voice, unclean presence, unclean frequency, whatever you want to say. They avoid unclean because they know it will corrupt them. Proverbs 23. Jesus came to bring us life and life abundantly. That means, praise God, light, life, vision, sight. Proverbs 23. Hallelujah. See, discipleship is the process of conver converting the soul and purifying the conscience. That's what it's about. Proverbs 23 and verse 1, please. When you sit down to eat with a ruler or somebody in authority, consider carefully what is before you and put a knife to your throat. If you are a man or woman given to appetite, do not desire his delicacies, for they are what? Deceptive food. In other words, I want you to look at this differently. Look at yourself as sitting down and talking to somebody. What's coming out of their mouth can be deceptive food for you. Has everybody got it? So you must be careful. That's why gossip and all of this other stuff, backbiting, grumbling, complaining, all of that is corruptive frequency, which will corrupt another individual's conscience and your own. Verse 4, do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding. Cease, will you set your eyes on the things which are not for riches certainly make themselves wings, and they fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his what? Delicacies, his words. For as he thinks, so he is. You think the devil knows that verse? As he thinks, so he is? You betcha. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not what? With you, because he's got a seared conscience. The more so you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Delicacies of the wicked is deceptive food, deceptive influence, and a deceptive frequency that will corrupt the individual and its conscience. Psalm 43. Psalm 43. Psalm 43 and verse 1. Vindicate me, O God. Plead my cause against the ungodly nations. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust men and frequencies and presence and words. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why am, do I go mourning? Because of the oppression of the enemy. Oh, send your what? 
your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and on the harp I will praise you, O God, my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I believe we're entering the season of vindication. But God can't vindicate something that's corrupted. Do you understand? Until there's that process of conversion and purification, there must be a level of area so that we can vindicate. Amen? So we can be vindicated. You know, you, you got to ask yourself, what is the state of your consciousness or your awareness? Again, <laughs> yeah. A person who engages in repeatedly in criminal lying or antisocial behavior with no remorse or empathy for its victimized or for the victimization of others is a psychopath. That's what he calls psychopath. And is also a spirit that puts a person in that condition. I'm going to close it. Jude 14. And that's not chapter 14. Jude 14. <laughs> Be careful what you do behind closed doors. Nobody gets away with it. The door may be closed to you, but it sure ain't closed to God. Amen? Amen? Verse 14, now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have what? Spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers. See, these people are not laboring unto God. They're laboring unto themselves. These are grumblers and complainers walking according to their own lusts. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts or desires. These are central persons who cause divisions, not having the fellowship or leading of the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit or in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves or in tongues, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and ever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And to God be the glory. Amen. Okay, so we've got Exodus of Corruption. And we know that it's the time of end of lies and deception. So what is the state of your consciousness? That's between you and God. Get it pured. Get it converted. And get it cleansed. Remove all corruption. Amen. Praise God. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. And we thank you for your mercies and grace. We want to be aware. We want to be alert, Lord. And we want to be able to perceive those things that are from you with tr true, true interpretation. But we can't do it if our conscience is corrupted. So have mercy upon us. Let your grace abound. And forgive us for words of corruption and releasing a frequency of corruption. <laughs> and let us discern these things. Put a guard over our mouth, our mind, our tongue, our hearts, our eyes and ears and our gates. 
that we may stand righteous in your sight according to your will with a pure conscience in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.